let us turn our thoughts today to Martin Luther King <clears throat> and recognize that there are ties between us, all men and women living on the earth. That's step one, recognizing that you are interconnected to every single person on this planet. Ties of hope, ties of love, sister and brotherhood, that we are bound together in our desire to see the world become a place in which our children can grow free and strong. It's very interesting because when children enter the mix, we suddenly become very proprietary. We suddenly care about what the children are being exposed to. What are the children, how are the children gonna react? react? How are they going to be in 10, 20 years from now? What world are we going to leave them? And while I find that very important for our children, I think we need to start talking about the child inside each one of us and care just as much about the world I'm living in. What's it for me? And really step it up. Really make it my calling or your calling to do something about the world you live in. And it's an inside job not an outside job. It's not about going out there and screaming and fighting. It's about changing what our perspective is on the inside so that as we move through life, everything changes around us and that ripple just goes. And this is what Martin Luther King was all about. Affecting change through peace, through love. All of his quotes are about that. We are bound together by the task that stands before us and the road that lies ahead. We are bound and we are bound. So we are bound together, and I love that last line. We are bound, and we are bound. And this is James Taylor, by the way. We are bound, and we are bound. So we are bound together, but we are bound to make something happen. We are bound to if we start from the perspective of love. If we start inside of ourselves, we are bound to make something happen. So, in the lyric, it says, the task that stands before us. So what's the task? What's the task that stands before you? Are you even aware of a task that stands before you? Are you even aware of the greatness inside of you that is looking for you to activate it, to give it clear passage? Are you aware of the task you have by the very presence you share on this earth with all of us. Every single one of us has a task at hand. And since you're sitting in this room this morning, I'm going to know that the task at hand for all of us is to recognize that God is in everyone, to recognize what God is, to finally recognize what God is here in 2018 you know, we're not walking down the streets of Jerusalem in Jesus' day. We are in 2018. So what's our task? Well, I think our task is to live this science more boldly, more fearlessly, to live this teaching. And Peggy gave me this wonderful book, uh, The Beverly Hills Lectures, which I had not read. And I was, I've been reading them, and so there was this one little thing that he said. These are the lectures he did towards the end of his life. This is on Wednesday, January 23rd, 1952. Who was born, who was alive then? Okay, that's a lot of people. I was not. Um, <laughs> just to be clear. So this is what he said. This is what he said at that lecture. He said, the time will come when we shall know there is no such thing as the individual mind, separate from the universal mind, and no such thing as an individual person separate from the universal. No such thing. The time will come when we finally get it that there's no such thing as you and me when it comes to mind, when it comes to God, when it comes to spirituality, when it comes to truth. There's no such thing as the people in Afghanistan and the people in the United States. There's no such thing as the people in North Korea and the people in the United States. We are, we are buying into that. 
We are, I'm getting all emotional. We are being told that these people over there are different from us. They're not God. They're something else. That's not true. We are all one people. And the task before us is to live that, to see that, to honor that, to know that, to believe it so deeply that we can't even comprehend thinking of them and us. We say we want peace. But as I said weeks ago in the Bhagavad Gita, you cannot accept peace if you are willing to entertain its opposite. You cannot accept prosperity if you're willing to entertain its opposite. You cannot accept love if you're willing to entertain its opposite. So what's the task before us? The task before us is to entertain the things we want to do, the things we want to accomplish, that which we want to live. And all of us, how many of us want to live in peace? How many of us want a world full of peace and love? Wouldn't you like to just fly? I'd like to visit North Korea someday. I would like to be able to fly there. I'd like to be able to go anywhere on this earth and not be afraid of anything. And that's upon us. But it's a task that we must accomplish. So last week, uh, I started the year with the thing itself. And the second chapter in the book is The Way It Works. And although I said last week I wasn't going to do the four chapters, <laughs> when I was reading The Way It Works, I was like, well, I have to talk about this because, because that's our point. I know what it is. I know what the thing itself is. I understand this philosophy. I get it. I've been doing it for over 20 years. I get it. I even get the way it works. But am I using it? Am I using it? Am I using it in my boxer shorts, walking around in the mud, trying to fix something that I knew I couldn't fix because I, I didn't even know how I did it? And, and yet I couldn't, I couldn't leave it alone. My mind was like, and yet what I really should have done, I should have just stood still and treated. What a novel idea. <laughs> Use my mind to know the truth. And it would have probably put me in bed sooner. I would have been okay with the lights being out. <laughs> And I've just said, this will all resolve itself perfectly. And in fact, there's probably a very good reason. It was interesting because the night before, there was a possum. Could have been the possum's fault. <laughs> there was a possum on our fence that the dogs were just staring at and barking at. And that possum went all the way. Actually, it was right where the lights went out. <laughs> it was. It could have been the possum. Don't tell me, it was not me. So, <laughs> this possum went all the way across the back fence, all the way across the side fence. By this point, I'm sitting on the couch with the dog, and we're all just watching it. It comes all the way up to the side fence and leans its head in and just stares at us. And I, I, we must have sat there like five minutes, and they weren't barking anymore. They were just like looking, and I was looking, and I was like, how cool. I wonder if that possum's thinking, I would like to come in and meet. <laughs> I would never do that. But, but I did think I should go out back, so I did. I went out back, and the possum scurried away until about 20 minutes later, and it was right back where it was, which is where the lights were out, and anyway, that's all. <laughs> Maybe the possum had a stronger mind than I did and said, this is too much light for me. <laughs> so, the way it works. Quote, Ernest Holmes, man's intelligence is universal mind, functioning at the level of man's concept of it. Man's intelligence, your intelligence, is the intelligence of the universe. Let's just start with that. Everybody good with that? Yeah. Your mind is the breadth and depth of the entire universe. You know everything. You understand everything. You have access to everything. You can use everything to the degree that you allow it. I like, did you just go, ugh? <laughs> you were so with me. You were like, yes, yes, to the degree you allow it. Oh, shit. But that's how we feel, isn't it? It is. It's like, I get this, I get this, I get this. So why isn't it working? It functions at the level of man's concept of it. So, and then he says, in big, bold print, this is the essence of the entire teaching. This is the essence of the whole teaching. Everything that mind is, I am, to the degree that I am willing to acknowledge it 
and take it. Ernest Holmes says, everything that we receive in life is by mental taking, taking it mentally. So, he goes on to say, and I love this quote, we shall find a better God when we shall have arrived at a higher standard for man. You know, we give God such a bad rap. You know, uh, growing up Catholic, we gave God a really bad rap, right? Just God was, in, God was the, the problem. God was, it was God's fault that I didn't get what I wanted. It was God's fault that this happened. You know, I have, my whole family is pretty much still Catholic, and they really do. They, my aunt will say to me, I'm so mad at God today, I just don't know why he's allowing all of this. You know, and I, I, I've learned not to get into a discussion about that and say, actually, it's us. <laughs> it's not God. But we will arrive at a better understanding of God when we arrive at a better understanding of ourselves. I mean, think about this. I am God. You are God. Everything that's going on in the world, your fault, <laughs> your responsibility. You are part of it. I am part of it. We are part of this atmosphere of life. We are part of race consciousness. You are race consciousness. That's what, that's what we are. We are part of this race consciousness that's going on in the world. So if something's going on in the world today, I'm a part of it, my mind. That's what he's saying here. So as soon as we get a better grip on who we are, when you can look in the mirror and love yourself unconditionally, no matter how much weight you've gained, lost, no matter how old you think you are or not, no matter what's going on in your world, if you can look at yourself and say, I love you no matter what's going on in your life, you have arrived at a better understanding of God because that's unconditional love and that's what God is. So I need to be that unconditional love, that loving unconditionally to myself and to others. Ralph Waldo Emerson says this, there is no great and no small to the soul that maketh all, and where it cometh, all things are, and it cometh everywhere. There is no great and no small. So, what are you trying to accomplish in your life? What is it you want to accomplish in your life? We had dinner this week with someone who's a, a member of our center, who has been coming here since, the, since I first started my ministry, really, really, for like 15 years. And she's a young Scottish woman. And she was sharing with me the story of a TV series that she has written, produced, stars in, head writer. She's done it all. She's done everything on this series. And she was telling me the journey it has taken. And the end of the story is it has been bought for an entire first season uh, with her in every single role. Now, that doesn't usually happen, as most of you in the business know. It doesn't usually happen. And there was no compromising on her part because, as she said to me, she goes, well, you always tell us. I love he hearing her say that this philosophy got her where she is right now. And she is in a very powerful position. And I can't wait till this series airs because I think she's going to just skyrocket through the roof. And, but what she said was, she goes, you know, what this science teaches us, or she said, what you've always said is that you don't need to compromise because the truth is always there. Follow the truth. If no one wants to follow the truth with you, don't, that doesn't mean compromise the truth. It means open up more so that the truth, the people that can honor the truth come in. And that's what happened. And it was a fabulous, wasn't it a great story? Fascinating story. And when she went home, I said, can I see the pilot? She says, well, no one's allowed to see the pilot. Um, blah, blah, but I'll send you the link, a private link. You can watch it. And it was already midnight. And I was like, I'm still going to, I'm going to watch five minutes. It's an hour pilot. I'm going to watch five minutes and then I'll watch the rest tomorrow. So I turned it on from the instant it started. I, 1.15, I was done watching the pilot. And I was blown away. And I went, well, of course. Absolutely, of course. Of course this happened. And yet, here's the irony too, she produced it herself because the, the deal fell out for her to do the pilot and she just said, she said, I didn't go to that place. You know how you say we're all, we can be victims or we can take charge of our life? She goes, I thought about being a victim. She goes, I probably was for a couple days. And then I went, no, I'll do it myself. She said, in 24 hours, I had the money, I had the crew, I had the stars. She has an amazing cast. And it just was, it blew my mind to sit there and watch this teaching. So when we're looking at the way it works, she showed the way it works. Mind unencumbered by race consciousness, unencumbered by the way everybody else tells you it should be, mind in its purest, simplest state can do whatever it wants to do so long as it decides to do it and believes it. That's this teaching. 
And any single one of us can be sitting in that position. Any one of us, because we all are. It's just, are we going to step it up? So, he says it's entirely a question of our receptivity. He says, our beliefs set the limit of our demonstration, of a principle with it set, which itself is, beyond, uh, is without limit. So this principle that we all know, this way of using our mind, is without limit. Why does it seem limited? I limit it. You limit it. Somewhere in your mind, you are limiting it. So the title of my talk this morning is Light It Up. And it's not just because of the marijuana laws. <laughs> it's called Light It Up. Up meaning unlimited potential. And it's really quite simple. Only light up what you want to see. How much of your life are you putting a spotlight on that you do not want to even really have in your life? How often do you take your light, you know, this song, you know, light it on up, you know, let's move it on up. How much in your life are you literally putting a spotlight on and then watching it grow and expand when you don't even want to be there? I've had so many conversations already, and we're only, let's say, 14 days into this new year, of people saying, I don't like what I do. I don't have passion for what I do. Numerous conversations with numerous people. I'm not happy with what I do in life. And I'm watching day go by and day go by, and we still think we have to stay where we're not happy. You know, when we left the NoHo Arts Center over a year ago, Everything changed. It was difficult. I knew it needed to happen, but it would have been easy to stay there, even though we didn't fit in there anymore. It would have been easy to stay there and just keep going on and on, but something in me said, there's a bigger version of this. There's something else you need to do with your life. When you hear that, when you hear something in you saying, there's something else you need to do with your life, even if it feels like you are going to have to decompose your entire life, you need to listen. We need to shine light on that. When something inside is saying, it's time. It's time to do something else. It's time to do something bigger. It's time to do something smaller. It's time to rest. It's time to stop being crazy. It's time to be, stop being so complicated. Because there is that thing inside of you and that thing inside of me that is just driving us forward, waiting for us to listen, waiting for us to say yes and then see where it takes you. I was driving by the theater the other day, and every time I drive by it, I'm thinking, I wonder if I'm going to have any emotional feeling about it. And I drove by, and then something came up, and suddenly I had driven by it, and I hadn't looked at it. I was like, well, that says something, doesn't it? It's almost not even in my, my mind anymore. It's a beautiful memory. So here we are, two weeks into the new year, and my question to you is, are you paying attention? Are you paying attention to what's coming through? This teaching is a brilliant teaching. And these, the, this book that I'm reading now, the Beverly Hills Lectures, it's very interesting listening to Ernest Holmes at the end of his life. I just taught the seminar lectures, and that was even past this. But in this book, he seems to be saying in each lecture, that what he brought forth has not been realized, even though it's been 26, 27 years, has not been realized. And he's also saying in this book that what he brought forth, he didn't bring forth. What came through him is so audacious, so amazing, so integral to the forward momentum of mankind. It is the task at hand to get really clear on how powerful our minds are and that our minds create our experience to the degree that we are consciously aware of what we're creating. There's two sides to your mind. There's your conscious mind and then there's your subconscious mind or subjective mind. The power is in the conscious mind, you being awake, aware, really paying attention to what's coming through you. What are you thinking? And being aware that if what you're thinking isn't literally taking you where you want to go, 
in the great words of Bob Newhart, stop it. <laughs> Just stop and think for a minute. It's like, you know, when you're, when you're in, a, in a fire, you're supposed to, what is that? Drop, roll, stop, drop, roll, and run. But stop, drop, and roll. Stop, drop what you're thinking, and now roll with what's coming through. That's where we are. So you can know how this thing works. It works through your mind, very simply. I mean, it really is that simple. And I love that I get to say that. It's really that simple. Your mind is thinking, what are you thinking? And I love that little thing. I am thinking, what am I thinking? Am I willing to live the results of what I'm thinking? If you just use that all day, I am thinking, what am I thinking? Am I willing to live the results of what I'm thinking? Because I can tell you there have been times this week when I've asked myself that and I said, I w do not want to live the results of this thought, of what I happen to be thinking right now. But there's your power. If you are consciously aware of what you're thinking and what you're doing, you can't help, you can't help but redirect it. You've got that power, you have that right to take it and redirect it. Don't tackle it to the ground, because you know that thing, what we resist persists. Don't get into a huge fight. How many of you have negative thoughts ever? <laughs> right? We all do. Things pop into our minds. One of the things I loved about The Secret was when the guy thought about an elephant and suddenly the elephant was in his room. That would be hard if everything you thought manifested. Do you know why that doesn't happen? Why do you think that doesn't happen? Besides the fact that you're not Samantha from Bewitched. <laughs> why? Because there's a universal consciousness, yes. Very close. It's your consciousness. Even though you're thinking a thought, you're thinking a thought from a collective atmosphere of your thinking. And the universe is only going to give you what you're equal to collectively. So that's why, right here, right now, you should start using this mind, your mind, this philosophy, to start tipping the atmosphere of your mind in the right direction. Because if your mind is 60% fear and 40% adventure, your 60% is winning. If your mind is 52% lack and 48% prosperity, your lack is winning. That's how this works. That's the way it works. You knowing your mind and then being in charge of it. Being the, the, the person that decides what to think, when to think, how to think, and then ask yourself, do I want to live the results of what I am thinking? Martin Luther King said this, take the first step in faith. You do not have to see the whole staircase. Just take the first step. So I'm here to say to you, the task before you is to take the first step, to take back your mind, thus take back your life to be consciously vigilant in knowing what you're thinking, in knowing what you believe, think from those beliefs that you know will sustain you and drive you where you wanna go, and then allow something even bigger than all of that to come through you. Because right now, it's time to honor what Ernest Holmes was saying in that book as I'm reading it, which is, there's something amazing here for us to grasp, not only grasp, but to know, not only know, but to live, and not only live, but to share and show the world. I want people to be able to point to every one of you and say, I'll have what she's having. <laughs> because you see the life that's being led. That's who every one of us should be. That's the task before us. That's what the possibility is. That's what we are capable of. And it's time to not just be capable, but to be actually living the truth of this teaching. Namaste.